Hello and welcome. This is Scott at Mexoft Support and I'm going to give you a brief demonstration of Mexoft's completely free milling package called FreeMill. FreeMill is built on a plug-in technology which means it requires a host CAD system but this also means it potentially can be plugged into many CAD systems. Today it is available with SolidWorks, Rhinoceros and Mexoft's own VisualCAD. The screen you're looking at right now is VisualCAD. First I need some part geometry to machine. Now I can create that geometry right here in VisualCAD. VisualCAD has some very nice functionality for creating geometries such as curves, surfaces and meshes, and for modifying and managing that geometry when you're modeling your part. But for this demonstration, I want to import an existing model that has been saved in step format. To do that, I go to File, Open, select the step file, and the system will bring it in through the translator to the VisualCAD system. The VisualCAD also has the ability to translate from other sources, such as Autodesk, iGES, Parasolid, Rhinoceros, Step, or Serial Lithography, and other translators. These are all included in VisualCAD, which is available for free with FreeMill. With the part model loaded, I'll choose VisualMill, FreeMill, and the FreeMill wizard comes up on the left of your screen. The wizard is designed as a series of simple steps that will walk you through the process of creating a machining operation, then generating a toolpath, simulating that toolpath, and then post-processing that to create a file that will go out on your machine to cut the part. In the first step of the wizard, I need to define the axis or orientation of the cutter while cutting the part. One way to do that is to align it with one of the principal axes of the world coordinate system. The world coordinate system is a fixed, immovable coordinate system that exists in the 3D part space, and you can see it in each of the views on the screen. But the world coordinate system is for reference only. It does not directly control the output of the tool path. For illustration purposes, if I were to pick one of the other options, you will clearly see another coordinate system that exists, and this coordinate system does directly control the output of the tool path and is called the machine coordinate system. The goal then of this step in the wizard is not only to align the z-axis of the machine coordinate system with the spindle of the machine, but also to orient the x and y-axis parallel to the axis of the machine tool. This part will be mounted on the table of a vertical spindle three-axis mill. That means that I want the z-axis of the machine coordinate system straight up towards the spindle of the machine, the x-axis towards the right, and the y-axis towards the back, which happens to be the same as the world Z. This is then the correct orientation for the machine coordinate system for my part and this setup. The next step in the wizard is to define the stock material or the workpiece that the part will be made from. The system scans the part geometry on the screen and creates a minimum box that it uses as the stock material. And you can see the size here. Down below, you can enter values if you wish to enlarge or grow that box, but you cannot put in values that will reduce the box smaller than the geometry of the part. With the stock material defined, I'm going to go to the next step in the wizard and define the program origin or work zero. Here I can use any pick point in the screen, but I'm going to choose set to stock box. I'm going to locate this part against two locating pins on the back side of the stock material and one stop pin against the left side. Therefore the natural place for me to put the origin or program zero is at the back left corner which is northwest and I want to locate it in height three inches above the bottom of the part which happens to be at the top of the material so I'm going to use the highest Z. This moves the machine coordinate system to that position and all output in your tool path will come out relative to that origin being zero and according to the axes of the coordinate system. Next I will define the cutting tool. Free mill supports straight ball mill, 
flat end mill, and a radius end mill, sometimes called a bowl mill. I'm going to use a ball mill, and the parameters are shown which affect the size of the cutter and holder. The next step is to define some basic feeds and speeds and a spindle RPM. Cut feed, engage feed rate, and a retract feed rate as shown in the diagram. With those parameters set, we're ready to generate the machining operation. Free mill produces one kind of operation, parallel finishing cuts across the face of the part. Each pass is separated from the adjacent pass by a step over distance, which defaults to 50 thousandths, and I'll leave it at that. And the other parameter that we need to set is what direction are those passes, either along X or along Y. And I will choose along X. So let's generate the operation and the path. There's the tool path. Let's simulate that in the stock material that we've specified. And there is the cutting shown in that stock material. Finally, let's post-process the tool path. Post-processing converts the generic or universal tool path into machine-specific codes to be run on a particular machine. Freemail supports over 200 existing post-processors. I have chosen the Haas machine, so let's execute that post. I'll now specify a file name for the output to be saved under, and in just a few moments you'll see the post-processed listing of the G codes and M codes for that Haas machine. And here they are. And if you look down through here, you can examine it and see that the z-axis values are negative. We would expect that because we place the work zero or origin at the top of the material, so all cutting would be negative. Well, that's it. I hope this demonstration has been informative and helpful as you begin to use free mail. Thank you.